Good morning and welcome back to 501 CTV. I'm your host, Janelle Harris, and this is the podcast that talks to system change leaders, thought leaders, nonprofits, and nonprofit partners to find out what's new and what's going on out there. And today I am very excited to have with me Tiffany Doge and Eric Chafin with Children's Harbor. Good morning. Good morning. morning. How are you guys? Doing well. Good. Uh, we, uh, you know, we've got like a packed house in here today, but um, <laughs> I'm really excited to have you guys on and talk a little bit about all the great things that you guys are doing because there's a lot of like really important information that I want to dive into. Um, definitely want to know a little bit about you guys and how you got into this crazy world of nonprofit fun. And, uh, and then we'll wrap it up with the important things, which are all of your fun events. You guys have an amazing one that I really want to make sure everyone knows about. So Thank you. without further ado, hi. Hi. Hello. Okay. So <laughs> Tiffany, how long have you been? You are the CEO of the organization. I am. How long have you been with Children's Harbor? I have been with Children's Harbor for seven years. This is my seventh year. That's amazing. I know. It has been amazing. So cool. And where, where did you come from before that? Like what kind of led you down the path of ending up here? That's that's a lot. We only have like 25 minutes. <laughs> Cliff Notes said. version. Let's go. Cliff you can do this. Version. I have faith in you. Well, I grew up in this field. Like I grew up, I entered child welfare at the beginning of my career. I started at the bottom as a, a transporter when I, when I, you know, you get your degree, you're yeah. ready to start. You got to start somewhere. I started at the bottom. I was a transporter. So it's the very lowest on the totem pole where they hire you to take kids to medical appointments, to take kids to, um, visitation. Okay. You're just kind of a taxi driver for case managers. And I just worked my way up. Gotcha. Uh, eventually was a case manager. Absolutely loved working with birth families. But at the time in the early nineties, I was finding that the foster families that I was placing kids with were more questionable gotcha. than the birth parents that we were removing the kids from. And I thought, who is licensing these people? <laughs> right. Like, like, is there a gatekeeper? And so I started to really explore what it took or what it meant to support foster homes. And so then I moved into, uh, got my certification to train foster parents, support foster parents, was recruited by Kids in Distress to build their foster care program mm -hmm. in Broward County and spent 15 years supporting foster families. And that was my love. Uh, my husband became promoted as CEO uh, of that organization. Cool. And I continued to support that organization. Mm -hmm. And then eventually was like, oh, I need to do more. I, all I'm doing is my nails. <laughs> <laughs> and like, Children's <laughs> Harbor had was was supporting teenagers. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, no one was really supporting teenagers well. And I thought, this is the one thing that Kids in the Stress doesn't do. Right. And, and, and this is a great match for us. And that's a great point because I feel like, you know, in, in talking with a lot of nonprofits just in our, our community, it, there's kind of like, um, or there has been r until maybe recently, it, like a disconnect. So it's either like right. babies and younger kids or, or like you're aging out and you, you get the leftovers. It, yeah. You like, leftovers. so it's, it's interesting to me and we'll get into kind of like the three areas that, that, you know, Children's Harbor serves and, and what that means and what that looks like. Um, but that's, that's interesting because I've, I've noticed that too a little bit. Um, but well, that's great. So seven years, that's a, that's a long seven, time. And, and that includes COVID. And so yeah. I feel like every COVID year was like seven yes. like dog plus, plus, years. Plus, plus. Yes. So it's really That's been 2,500 we years. <laughs> right. Exactly. 2,500 years. Give or take. Yeah. yeah. Give or take. Give Maybe. Or yeah. 10 years. Um, and Eric, you have um, kind of an interesting journey to, to where you got to be today. So yeah. let's hear about that. Yeah. No, I actually started my career out in IT back in the 90s and um, fast forward to... Um, probably about the last 10 years, I was in IT sales, actually brought Children's Harbor on as a client, and then found out that the campus was only like about seven minutes away from my house. Awesome. So I called Tiffany one day, I said, hey, you know, I kind of know what you guys do, but I really like to get more involved. So I took a tour with her and a couple of the gals there, mm -hmm. and was just blown away, not even knowing Children's Harbor was under my backyard. Right. But then having three kids of my own, mm -hmm. and then seeing the kids that we serve in Children's Harbor, and I was just just moved. I'm like, hey, what do you need me to do yeah. to really help? So I started to connect Tiffany with people that I knew in my circle, you know, donors and folks that could really help. Right. Um, yeah, did that. And then, of course, Tiffany's like, hey, why don't you come up and do some board work? So. Yeah. So <laughs> she pulled me on the board for about a year, did that. And that was actually really rewarding. And then uh, at that time, I was looking for another opportunity mm -hmm. in, the, in the area. And uh, Tiffany and their board chair had said, hey, what do you think about coming on and really helping us? 
move the needle and um, so I've been doing at this capacity for about three years and that's awesome space, so good for you very rewarding um how was the transition like going from corporate into the nonprofit sector yeah, because great question yeah I mean <laughs> that, terrifying. That, that was terrifying it was fantastic oh. I, let, let me I won't tell you anything yeah. other than that so it's it's a being in sales, I'm sure most people listening to this know that it's KPIs, it's numbers. So I come in, I tell Tiffany, hey, here are the activities. This is what we need to do. We have this many calls. We got to do this. We got to do that. She's like, bump the brakes. Just just hold on a second. Yeah. So we met in the middle and I you know, learned a tremendous amount of the nonprofit space. And, you know, it's obviously it's uh, just connecting people and having them aware of what we're doing yes, and the impact we're making, which is so significant. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, so speaking of the impact you're making, let's break down exactly what you guys do because you Children's Harbor has been around 26? 27 years. Okay, I was going to say, I did my homework. I looked online. I thought it was like 26 or 27 years. That's that's like a really long time. It's a really long time for no one to know who you are. <laughs> so thank God for Eric Chaffin. Yeah. The nice. number of people who came to the campus said, I didn't even know you were here. Mm -hmm. but, but you know what? Honestly, like to your guys' credit, um, doing this podcast, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is because so many of my friends even, I mean, Palm Beach County, Broward, there is a, a ridiculous amount of nonprofits mm -hmm. and your general population, unless you are like, you know, tied to a certain cause, they have no idea what's going on out there. Yes, that they, is a they just incredibly, don't know. thank you for saying that. Yeah. Because there are some legends as far as nonprofit yeah. existence in our, in South Florida. Yes. And they're great organizations. And so if you're a part of the general public, you're like, what is the difference? Why are there so many child welfare organizations? Why do you need so many child welfare organizations? And that's pretty simple pretty simple answer for us because you've got kids in the stress, you've got SOS Children's Village, you've got JAFCO in Broward County, you've got Place of Hope, you've got all these, you know. Yes. What is the difference? And, the, and we are really niche. They are great organizations yep. that serve younger children, mm -hmm. usually 12 or under. Um, they don't take behavioral children or children who have uh, experienced egregious trauma who are really struggling with dealing with what they have endured and what's happened to them. Right. Um, along with trauma comes difficult behaviors. If you're 15 yes. years old, you just can't wrap your brain around the cyclone of confusion that you're going through, and that manifests itself. Absolutely. We specialize. We are exclusively dedicated to a niche population, and that is teenagers in foster care. Mm -hmm. The kids that we serve have gone through unspeakable trauma. If you've seen it on the news, they're probably on my campus. Right. They're not... They don't want a new family. No, They're 16 I, years old. Yeah. They, they don't want to be placed in a family with a new brother and a new little sister. And to the, they, they need a chance to, again, wrap their brain around what happened to them. And we do our very best to create a space where they can heal, where they're part of our extended family. We're not trying to replace the people that you love. Yeah. We understand that you've lost everything that's important to you. We're just trying to create a place that feels like it could be home for a little while. Right. And also, like, I think that's important, too, because, I mean, just you think about that time in any kid's life being a yes. teenager. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, all the other stuff that comes with yes. that. And it's like trying to keep some normalcy yes. in, that, uh, yes. in that time frame. And also, the one thing that struck me a lot on your website was the whole education piece of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like... The um, the dropout rate yes. for the fo you know foster kid community that that to me was like probably one of the most heartbreaking things because education to me obviously it's so important and it's that's like a foundation and that's mm -hmm. like a structure that's that's there for them and if you take that away mm -hmm. it, that's that crash course is the entire future for for that kid so that to me I thought was really important and it is the, the, and the thanks stats to there, uh, yeah. funders like the Jim Moran Foundation we're able to really have the one-to-one -one attention that they need right now we have a boy on our campus we've have we have a few kids that fit the same sort of story mm -hmm. but he's 17 years old and he reads at a fourth grade level and it's because he's had to raise himself yeah it's because he's never he's never had a grown-up in his life that ever made him 
go to school. Invested that time. Invested that said, time in him. Yes. He reads at a fourth grade level. He's getting ready to age out in less than three months. And so you really need, he's not going to go to school and be with, with fourth graders or fifth graders. And the alternative schools, you know, they're on a bus for three hours. Or yes. So the Jim Rand Foundation has really made it possible for us and the Community Foundation of Broward to provide intense academic and life skills programming within our campus so that if we have a kid who's on that far end, who's just too far behind, yeah. they can receive that programming on our campus. Right there. Without feeling the shame, without yes. feeling the that they would feel that they had to integrate back into. Absolutely. So let's talk about, y y you mentioned the word campus. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what that means because you know I don't think people understand really how this works like the teen group home scenario like is it one is it many how many do you have right. <laughs> let's talk about that because i think it's really important for people to know what that looks like well it's amazing when, when tiffany and i talk to people around the community and then until they come on campus is really what we hear all the time wow i never thought this is what this was so we sit on about eight acres of land at mm -hmm. timber pines and we have a maternity home we have a boys home and we have a girls home and at any given time, we're anywhere from 25 to 30 teens that are with us. Okay. Um, so when you step on campus, you know, we have a full-size basketball court. Mm. We have a gazebo. We have, I mean, it's a very large piece of uh, property. It's a community. Yeah, it's a community. That's totally and what I envisioned. On, you feel really warm. It's a gated community. It, it is not. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Florida. <laughs> we love our gated communities. This is true. This is true. It is true. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. So, and then the age range that's in there, you said, is just that. Just teenagers, yeah, 13, just to, 13 to 17 and oh, one day shy of 18th birthday. And then if they have nowhere, you know, a lot of our kids go to college, mm -hmm. um, to a state school. Right. But if they choose that they would prefer a certification program mm -hmm. or they're just not ready yet, they do have the option to move across town to our second campus, which, af which provides affordable housing and wraparound support to kids who've cool. aged out of foster care. And we yep. can have 34, about 34 kids at a time. So we're very niche, and that's the struggle. We serve 30 kids at any given time on main campus and 34 at our Browns Harbor campus. Right. And that's not a huge footprint. So it's so difficult yeah. to to garner support because you know most, most people want to be affiliated with the giants, right. you know, with the legends. And so we are very, very intentional about the kids that we serve, mm -hmm. making a meaningful impact in the life of specific children. And sometimes our kids are with us for two or three years. So that does, that is a challenge for Eric when he's out there speaking to corporate, um, to corporations and to small businesses that want to support. They're like, they want more bang for their buck. They want sure. more kids, more kids. And we really are intentionally focused on making a meaningful impact on the lives of specific children, the ones who've been left behind by the system. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Uh, Tiffany just touched on that. You know, we have a few donors that have been coming to us uh, just, you know, in the past, I'd say 18 months. Mm -hmm. And it's been very interesting because they were affiliated with large organizations. Like given everybody's doing wonderful work. Absolutely. Right. Uh, but these these new donors have been coming to us and they say, hey, you know what? We want to be more involved with something more intimate, some more, something more hands-on, yes. something I can see, feel, yes. be a part of. Yep. Yes. And we have people like that. And you can see this shift, a little bit of a shift, where people really want to get into the, into the, the nitty gritty with, yeah. with us to say, hey, I, you know, I know I'm writing you a check. I know that I'm doing this, but I really want to see the impact I'm making. I um, love, that's so. one of my favorite things. I'm sorry to interrupt you. One of my favorite things from moving from a larger organization to a, to a midsize or to a smaller is that when I ask you for $1,500 mm -hmm. because we need a refrigerator for Miss Donna's house, right? I'm showing you a picture of the refrigerator that we bought for Miss Donna's right. house yeah. or the, or the if sneakers for Grady's birthday. Mm -hmm. You know that this kid loves red and black. These are the sneakers that he wants. You're not just cutting a... a that, I, that is, that's so huge. And, you know, when you guys were talking about how you're like kind of this, this niche, you know, I, I, that's the first thing I thought was, you know, if I'm, if I'm a donor and I'm really, I'm called to the cause and I'm like this, <laughs> you know, I really want to help in some way. Nothing to me is more impactful than being able to like really be on the front line. Cause so I was just having this conversation the other day with my husband. Like I have kids that are in elementary and middle school every week. It's like it's a fundraiser. Coming. It's <laughs> I know. Coming. just wait. The teen years are almost here, but you, you, you have these fundraisers mm -hmm. and, and they just 
money. Put a check in my hand, put yes. a check in my hand. Yeah. We never see where that goes or what it's doing. And it drives me crazy. Where does the candy money go? Where does the <laughs> candy money go? And the, the wrapping paper money. That wrapping paper is so expensive. It's so expensive. And like, it's nice. I, I love that that is, I, I think that's a huge differentiator for, differentiator for your organization is that people really, I, like you said, they're seeing exactly where that impact lies. And that's huge. I think that's so cool. But it's interesting. When, the one thing that Tiff and I always you know, broadcast in the community is providing a childhood back mm -hmm. yes. to these kids. So literally every dollar that we bring in, 88 cents goes directly to mm -hmm. providing that experience and that childhood back to the kids we serve. Yep. And when people actually understand that and see that, um, they they definitely you know want to be a part of it. And I think they're really surprised about what that means. When you're talking about bringing childhood back to a kid. It's like you had a great week. Let's go to Chili's for dinner. Because the state doesn't fund you for that. Exactly. Like things that you just take for yeah. granted. Or, you know, you want to go beyond just having a birthday cake for a, your kid's birthday. You'd like to actually take them to the trampoline. Why can't I never remember the trampoline park's name? You know that? Adrenaline? That it's the one where they flying jump up and squirrel. down. They have it's that the one. I don't <laughs> flying there's squirrel. A, there's one called Flying Squirrel. Really? My 12-year-old my, my daughter does <laughs> requirements. So. Right, but it's, you is know, that, like creating experiences, that normal yeah. experiences for them. I... One of the most heartbreaking things I've ever heard in doing this podcast is I had a guest on and she said um, one of the volunteer opportunities that they had was writing birthday cards to the kids that they they serve because most of them, almost mm -hmm. all of them have never, ever, ever gotten a birthday card in their I, entire life. I always say this. Me, I'm like, I was I'm like, always I surprised at the number of kids that have never had a birthday party. And yeah. this year we had a we had a uh, we have a girl. I can't say her name because she's still there, but it was her first Christmas. I and know. So I know that they That's don't have gets quality me. holidays, but literally her first Christmas, yeah. and she's 17 years old, she asked for a Pandora bracelet. So, and I ordered the, like, the regular silver one with the heart, like just yeah. the normal. I didn't even think anything of it. Like, this was just something we could, we could take care of. It was like, I'm a normal size gift. We have people who give us gift cards through the year. And I'm like, okay, I've got a gift card. I'll buy this Pandora right. bracelet. And um, I'm in, I was there on Christmas day. I, I didn't think this was a huge gift item. I didn't think this was a big deal. And I wasn't even looking at her. So I'm, I'm in the room. They're, they're all opening their presents, like, you know, everybody oh. at one time. And she just starts hysterically crying. She's, oh, she opens this bracelet and it was the loudest, most, she was just hysterically crying. And I'm like, I, I, you're like, is this a good? I'm like, what happened? Are we happy? What happened? Or, yeah, <laughs> is this a good yeah. And she was, she shared later on that this was yeah. something that she was going to reward herself with when she finally aged out. She finally was able to yeah. graduate from high school, and she said, "I never thought anybody would ever get me anything like this." And she just, she just cried and cried and cried about this Pandora bracelet. And I thought, yeah, I know, I know, it's very. It's like I. Uh, just something I didn't even think twice about. And it means so much because I just felt so seen. Mm -hmm. I just felt like somebody finally heard me. Somebody finally saw me. And I went like, oh, Pandora. I know, I know. Um, and there's so many of those stories. So and that's, many. I mean, for so me, many. like having kids, it's like, oh. Yeah. oh it I mean, comes home. It comes home quickly. It's tough. Yeah. It's it's tough to see that. But um, so, what are some of the other things you guys also have? So we talked about the group homes, mm -hmm. independent living, which is eighteen to twenty three. Eighteen to twenty three. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother podcast. That's got to be. They are making me. That's why my face is sagging into my neck. They're making me old. <laughs> just making me old. You are oh. rocking it. You're doing just <laughs> fine. They're killing me. These yeah. eighteen and twenty three year olds. Give I me know. a thirteen year old any day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I can only imagine the things that, you know, they, they, <laughs> they need they're to be taught. I, I, they're, they're very lucky. Just let me just know say everything that. all yeah. the time yeah. about everything. I'm sure. I'm sure oh, they yeah. do. Oh, 30, 30 of them. People oh, complain gosh. about having two. Talk to me about yeah. your two teenagers. Please <laughs> let me hear your stories. They're all coming at you. <laughs> yes. Um, but yes, we have our second campus is dedicated to kids who've aged out of okay. foster care. Our first is... Is, and then we also serve about 120 families in the community. Got you. And that's the family strengthening. That's family strengthening. And that is not at-risk families. That could be your family. Yeah. If you have a death in your family and your child is really struggling, mm -hmm. and they just, it's a, maybe it's the first time they've ever lost someone they love. Right. The Children's Services Council of Broward enables us to go in and provide in-home counseling. That's to awesome. To regular, everyday families that live in our county. 
Um, we have dealt with everything from, unfortunately, the shooting in Parkland. Yes. Helping children get over their grief and their yeah. survivor's guilt with that unfortunate incident. Um, we've also dealt with gender identity. Mm -hmm. my, my child thinks that they're female, right. but they're biologically male, and we don't know yeah, how, how to, to handle this. That, yeah. uh, we've also dealt with just, I think there's a lot of anxiety since COVID. Uh -huh. A lot of families have kids that are overwhelmed with social anxiety. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing a lot of counseling with families to help kind of give them the tools that need to support their kids. That's amazing. Um, tell me about like some of the ways, you know, I'm sure volunteers are a big part of, of your, your program. How are the volunteers kind of, uh, where are they coming from? Why are they coming to you? And how many more do you need? And do we need to Another challenge. put a, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, it's, it's actually, we've had some longstanding relationships uh, that uh, groups that come out. Mm -hmm. New York Life happens to be one of them, UK, okay. UKG. Um, and they, you know, from time to time, you know, we think need things done in campus. Oh, you know, cool. From, from a facilities perspective yep. or, you know, mulching or painting and, They've been actually phenomenal mm -hmm. from that perspective. That's great. Help us keep things moving. Of course, helping Pete and his team. Uh, yes. That's, I can imagine we have two campuses that um, our facilities team is doing great work, but they also need that extra added help. Yeah, I was going to say, so. I was just thinking like, you know, it's it's basically a neighborhood. <laughs> it's yes. a whole little neighborhood community. It's like a neighborhood. There's a lot of upkeep that goes, that yes. goes along with that, I'm sure. Absolutely. So. That's pretty cool. So on your website, if somebody wanted to get involved, obviously they could go there and 100%. come come do um, do some things that way. Um, so let's talk a little bit too, because we are already running out of time. What? We could talk for like three hours to you guys. Um, community or the events that you guys do. Tell me why they're important. Obviously, we we need funding and support mm -hmm. to to make this all happen. Um, let's talk about some of your events. You have like a really cool one coming up. That Absolutely. I'll tell you the little, the, the small Wait, portion, the high level, and then Tiffany get into the... The fun? The fun stuff. <laughs> yes, uh, you got to show so, that for sure. So, you know, we, we do quarterly events that help us move the needle. Mm -hmm. um, but the two big events that help us is Winterfest Boat Parade Watch Party and then the one we have coming up. Yes. That is on March 9th. It is Nash Bash. This is so cool, so, you guys. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Wait, am oh, I in? Am I out? Yeah, man. And am I in? Am I out? <laughs> And how long have we had this event? Because you give me a this cowboy boot and you say Nash, and I'm there. This is true. This is true. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. So this what? is this is our one our gala, so yes. to speak. Okay. It's, uh, Nashville Nashville themed. But yes. I, I I won't see the thunder because I know you're probably. We are honoring yeah. Ron Bergeron this year with the Beacon Award. Yeah. That's, that's a huge privilege to be able to honor a man that's been honored by everyone, presidents, governors, and now Children's Harbor. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the map. Honor his time. leadership. With, that's with amazing. I know. I'm so excited. That's so cool. And we've been given the privilege of hosting the event at his ranch. So the Green Glades Ranch. You guys. I know. If you don't get a ticket to this and go, I don't I don't know what else you need. Now, the only thing I need now to make it yes. is, to, to make it the pinnacle event is Dolly Parton. Does anybody know Dolly Parton? Dolly, Dolly if you're can out you there. <laughs> we need you. We're gonna Come tag on. her. You're perfect this. for this event. So, it's so, what, it's so what's easy. the date? It's March 9th. March 9th. We know you're free, March 9th, Dolly. At the Green Glades Ranch. <laughs> honoring Ron Bergeron. Just clear the clear the schedule, Dolly. It'll be for fun. the kids yes. who've been left behind by the foster care yes. system. I mean, please. if anyone has a Dolly Parton contact, please. Dolly Parton. <laughs> we would love her here. But we, we yes, we, we host these events because the state funds us for room and board. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. All of the extra, the, all the, the Pandora bracelets. Yes, that's important. That, but that's important for people to know. Yeah. I mean, that really, yes. room and board, it's like. That's it. You get a bed and you get sheets with a comforter. Yeah. You don't get posters for your bedroom. Mm -hmm. You don't get you don't get anything outside of what's made for you in the kitchen. So there's no like Uber Eats coming yeah. or special trips to Dairy Queen or right. Chick-fil-A or hey, you had a great there's no normalcy. There's no outings. Like exactly. you can go to the beach because it's free. Right. But you gotta you gotta pack a peanut yeah. butter and jelly you sandwich. Bring your bag lunch. Yes. Go to the you might be able to go to the movies, but you're not getting popcorn. Yeah. Like there's no childhood yeah there's no anything extra mm -hmm. you get a, a few hundred dollars a year for clothing and if you have a teenager that means they get one pair of shoes possibly a pair of jeans and a shirt because yeah. they'll wear that same they'll wear I that know. same outfit over and over and over again yes um but there's but that's no so important about what you guys do because like you said there's a lot of agencies out there yes. that do just do the basics and yes that's great we we need that i mean there's unfortunately way too many kids to you know to serve and make sure that their basic needs are met but right. 
I love everything that you guys are doing. I think it's I think it's so cool. Thank you. Um, okay, so we have Nash Bash, and then what's your other big one? The well, the boat that, parade. Well, he's Chafin. Come on, is going to host. Let's go. Chafin is launching our very first golf tournament in October. Stop. October 28th, so that'll be coming out fairly soon. Good for you. After we get through Nash Bash. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a good time. So Nash if you guys Bash. like the golf, we'll have you having our first annual golf tournament. I know he's Grand determined Hills. to make that's, me love golf. That's good. Uh, I golfed a lot in a well, former I life, yeah. but I just I don't have time to do it now. Now it's like mini golf. I'm gonna bring oh, little okay. pom poms. Yeah, I, I don't go. make noise, but I'm be like, no. yay! You, you could drive the cart. Shot. You just need to drive the cart yeah. around and oh, cheer I for could everyone. Drive a cart. Yes. I always thought we were doing the gopher outfit. What the gopher? <laughs> outfit? <We're laughs> gopher outfit. No, I'm, we would not do that to Tiffany. I'm not doing a gopher outfit. No. Who put you doing it at the gopher the gopher golf course? Oh, that's where it's at. Caddy shack. Caddy, it's that's a caddy shack. Caddy shack was at. Are you serious? Yeah, that's where caddy shack was filmed. Okay, I'm. Yeah. I did not know that that yeah. even was down here. <gasps> Grand Oaks. Wow. Plantation, Florida. Oh my. Yeah. This is. Do you want to drive I'll a car with a me? Tour. Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. I'll make my husband golf because he's like. Okay. I'll, he's always like, I'm retired. I don't have time to golf. He he's a really good golfer. I, I will make him come up. We're gonna set up little there tents for the ones who don't like. Yeah. Golf. Like we could just just hang out. Just hey, hang yeah, out you're area. doing a great job, honey. VIP lounge. Yes. Perfect. We've got this. Massages. Oh. Right. Maybe we can get a massage Whoa. person. <laughs> Eric's I don't think like, I've ever seen I don't. That on the course, really? We'll take it. Hey, why not? Somebody's gonna. Somebody will cool. want to volunteer. That, that. is genius. Anybody that listening cool. that wants to massage yeah. the, the women who've been left behind by their golfing <laughs> husbands? What about the golfers? When they're done. I mean, that's what I was. You guys are fine. You don't need that. Enough time for that. Give me a break. You got to golf all afternoon. You don't need a massage. <laughs> Complain to me about your golfing life. You yeah. need to have a good golf game. You need to be loose. And, no. You know? mm, no. I no. love it. Okay. Okay, so you guys, everyone out there, you guys need to follow along with Children's Harbor. Find, yes. Just see everything that they're doing. Also, I, I will mention that your website is really awesome. And Thank you. the one thing that I really liked and loved on there was um, there are actual stories on there um, from the actual kids that are um, a part of this community. And it's Again, that's really impactful. That really brings it uh, right into you know right into your lap of what and is going YouTube on. And our YouTube channel, we've got we've got quite a few oh, stories of kids that have aged out and allowed us to share a part of their story. So where do we find that? What's the YouTube channel name? Is it just Children's, Children's Harbor? Harbor? Children's it should be connected right to the. Okay, story. perfect. All right, so we're gonna put all that up so everyone can follow along. As we close out here at five hundred one CTV, is there any final thoughts, things that you want anyone to know about Children's Harbor? You, the nonprofit world, <laughs> go for outfits. Yeah. I don't know anything I, I you want to say. You know, our motto: breaking cycles and changing lives. That was great. But I know that Tiffany, oh. Tiffany's line that actually is probably more impactful than that is love the motto. Oh yes, <laughs> that's that's. If you remember one thing about us, it's that we do everything we can to love them well mm -hmm. and to help them get past what they've. But love them well is on everything, on every wall, on every shirt. That's an amazing motto. Love them when they suck and love them when they're amazing. Absolutely, but love them well. Yeah. <laughs> as a normal parent, as a not, as a normal <laughs> parent should, as if you know they were they were our own children. So. And we can't do it alone. So it takes an entire community to help us do that. Amazing. So. Thank Tiffany, so Eric, thank you so much. This is awesome. Like I said, I, I would love to have you guys back on too. And let's do talk it. Talk some more about, you know, we could really deep dive into this further. 30 minutes is not a lot. Anytime. Thank you so, so much for having thank us. Thank you very much. You. And um, thank you again for joining us here at 501 CTV. And a big thank you as always to Kana House Studios, Wellington's first and only content creation studio. We'll see you next time. Thank you.